Welcome to the True Colors Podcast, where we share our views on life, relationships, and culture, exploring big questions and providing simple answers to them, with your hosts, Jay Claire and Sally Olver. Welcome to the ninth episode of... Nine? Nine? Yeah, of True Colors. Okay. There you go. Okay. Congratulations. So we've got our 10th anniversary next week. Hmm. 10th anniversary. That's that's pretty cute. Pretty um, How are yeah, you, mate? So I'm 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 pretty good. I yeah. uh, I've been on the back of two long weekends in between um, the last time. Yeah, yeah. So I went to Palm Cove and then I took the oh, month. Oh yeah. Cup day today. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so I took two four day weekends in a row. It's good. I feel I feel refreshed and relaxed. Um, that's good. Yeah. Just just quickly, uh, how do you feel about the whole? Because that's not the topic of today, but I'm interested to know what your feelings are on the whole racing scenario. Um, I'll tell you mine. I freaking hate it. There it is. What? Why do you hate it? Because animals oh. are forced to run around in laps for people's capital gain. Mm. I feel that there's something a little bit wrong. No, actually, no, nay, nay, <laughs> get it, a lot, a lot wrong with that. It's not okay. Nay. I'm not okay. No, nay, nay. I say nay on behalf of the horses. I'm a nay sayer. How about that? So, yes. Um, so, um, yeah, so look, so my, my personal opinion, I don't like it. I will never bet on a horse. Enough. I think Have it's you trash. Have on a horse? I have, I have in the past. Yes, I have. And then um, I think That's when I was ignorance. actually at the races one time, uh, I was like, yeah, yeah. Have you not been to the races? Well, not just, I oh, did. mate, down to Sandown. I went down with my uncle down at Caulfield. Yeah. For a random race and um, I don't remember <laughs> enjoying it then, so... Yeah, uh, I'm, I do I'm think not I for have it. In the past may have like, yeah, it's Cup Day. Let's watch. I don't think I've ever really watched it, to be honest with you. I have many times, and I've got into it. Maybe, many when, times. I was, maybe when I was younger, but I haven't yeah. in a very long time. As an it's, adult, I don't know. Like, I think yeah, it's, I, yeah. as I was saying, to some people today. I think I think we're in the midst of a, especially with this, a very culturally dividing. Day, I think there will be people who will be like, "Bah, they're horses," and then there will be other people who will be like, "Yeah, it's not right, is it?" And that's pretty much how it's going to be. I, I don't think it's something that's going to go away. There's just oh, far too it's, much. It's, it's not ever interest. going away. But I, it's not I ever think going that, away. But that doesn't mean I have to agree with it. Yeah, exactly. And until a majority of people think it's ridiculous, then mm-hmm. it goes on as is. So unfortunate. I think it's just I, I think it's actually quite vulgar, to be honest. When mm. I really think about these horses being trained to win so that people get money, I'm like <laughs> gross. But they're treated so good. Oh stop it. Don't please. <laughs> it's such a weird thing for people to say what they they're giving them the good hay, are they? We're not giving them stale hay, all right? <laughs> like so that. it's okay. It's not like that, me, and that's cool. Like, like you said, like, you know, there are some people well, that are same, okay like... with it. I'm just not. Mm. Yeah. Point, point blank. I'm just not. And you know what? Matt bets on horses. Matt has a syndicate with his cousins. And I'm just like, man, that's gross. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. There I don't like go. it. I don't, and he, he knows, like, but, you know, that's, does yeah. He feel, that, does that he feel dirty every time? Sleep. I don't does know. He feel I, I, maybe if I drum it into him enough, he'll start to feel the shame. <laughs> I'll horse shame him. You'll be like, you go, you can go something like, you know, those horses have kids too. <laughs> Just like you. Yeah, that's right. How would you feel? <laughs> If we someone raced our kids, oh, that's right, we do race our kids for money. Uh, no, 
not a good argument. <laughs> what happens if we, yeah, we do everything to our kids, but um, it's a dual benefit, really. <laughs> oh, look. This is a great segue, to be honest with you. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, Talk to so me about what we're, what are we talking about today? Today, after um, some deliberation over the horses, we are now fully moving to a totally different discussion. And two-legged, two-legged creatures. We've got two questions, yeah, very related. Um, very the, close the to my question. heart at the moment. Yeah, you're right into it, aren't you? Well, yep. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're right. Well, yep. Okay. Yeah. The enthusiasm yep. was uh, unbelievable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first question is: Come on, hit me. Is homeschooling a realistic option? Hmm? And number two. Oh, wh- when we wait for number two after we've we've explored homeschooling. Oh, okay. We're just straight into the homeschooling. I think so. Okay, so let's talk about why. It, obviously, you're the expert between us here. Well, in the sense of knowledge, you, you've done a lot more probably deeper dive into this than I have. Yeah. And I just wanted to understand, obviously, there was a a reason or yeah. a trigger for you to do yeah. that. So can you explain why you're obviously looking at homeschooling and, and why, you, why, you, why you would consider it to, to be a viable option? Yeah, it's a really good question. So... Um, some of some of the listeners might have heard before on previous episodes. I've I've um, mentioned that two of my three kids are officially on the autism spectrum. They're officially diagnosed. Um, my my eleven year old Samuel and my nine year old Nate. And ah, oh, look, the thing with autism is um, no two profiles are the same. All profiles are different, but there are a few markers that are common for ASD kids or people, I should say. Um, and that is a, a huge one's emotional regulation. Okay, so they they do not have the ability to regulate regulate their emotions the way that you and I have. So their their emotional regulation, if you like, is delayed. So Mm -hmm. it it can revert to that of a three-year-old, right? So the problem with that, not only is that a problem socially, because when when you're when you're little, you're five, you're six, four, five, six, like you kind of blend because at some point someone's going to have a tantrum, and you know it's like it's not as apparent. But as they get older, like you know, their peers start to settle down. That emotional Mm -hmm. regulation that part of the brain starts to kick in, whereas the, the, theirs doesn't, right? Right. So only is it a, a social uh, – actually, I would say that this this reason would be secondary for me because, you know, people are always going to think what they're going to think and people are always going to make judgments and that's fine. But their learning is impaired at, at this point because they are not – regulating on their own therefore the information that they're processing they're they're meant to go there to learn the whole point of going to school is to learn right they're not learning anything because they're spending all their time trying to bring themselves back down so right so where's the so where's the disconnect between is between the educators and and the kids or what's that's is a it, big question. That's, is that's it, a, hang, hang on. This, the, the thing that I, in my quick overview of understanding homeschooling, one of the things that were called out was the fact that uh, homeschooling allows for that sort of one-on-one direction, whereas a, a vocation, as they say, whereas um, when you're in a school environment, it's not, it, it's far from being that. So it's, it's a, it's okay. one person trying to impart knowledge across and 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 help um, kids learn. Up to thirty-two. You know, one, one, one to thirty-two. Yeah, look, that sounds ridiculous. What what are you going to get out of that? 
Well, I, I think that if if you are a student who who is a, a, if you are a neurotypical student, so I would say Molly Bell is a neurotypical. So she learns the way that the majority would learn. Um, her brain is, that... is suited to that format, whereas my boys are not. And that's not to say, I just, I really want to make a disclaimer here. That's not to say I'm not this advocate for all autistic kids need to be homeschooled. I feel that if it's working, if mm. you have an ASD kid or an ADHD kid or a kid with any special need and they are in a mainstream environment and it's working and you're happy and they're happy, leave them. That's that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that, I've reached a point where I'm starting to say, okay, is this working? Mm. And if it's not working, because we've got the situation where you can't just pull your kid out of the school and say, oh, well, we'll just put you in another school because then you've got, you know, the risk of the, you know, problems at the other school. Like if you're just going from mainstream to mainstream, that's no, there's no point in doing that. You might as well stay where you are and just, you know, persevere. You said, you said, you said something there that I thought was interesting. um, And it's not privy to my uh, current verbiage at all. Like I've I've never heard anyone say it before, like neurotypical. Is that like a, uh, and I say this word as a statistical word rather than a, a culturally driven word. Good. But I love is that, it. Is that, a, is that another word for normal? Yes, mate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and I share that. Absolutely. It's a statistical, I hate the word normal. Um, if yeah. we're talking about um, stats, that's the word that we would use. But, mm. but, you know, if we're talking societally or culturally, I can't stand that word. But, yes. Yeah, I know. It's funny that it, it really has become a almost yeah. a stigmatizing word. Yeah, like, yeah it's horrible. It's normal. Yeah, What's no, normal? I, I don't use that word. Um, but, um, yes, that's what, that's what neurotypical means. It's, so how did... if, you're, if you're directly under the bell curve... <laughs> You're talking <laughs> stats. You're directly under the bell curve. You're a neurotypical slash you're AKA. A, you have yeah. you have privilege. That's a whole yeah. different discussion, really, isn't it? <laughs> um. Yeah. So, um, so, um, so how does this take you to the 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 world of considering homeschooling? Right. So that's a great question. So, like I said, if it's you'll you'll start to realise this when. Lucy goes to school is that you, unless you go to a private school, if you're looking at public schools, you can't just go, I, I want to go to that school. You have to be within the catchment, right? Yeah. So my sons currently go to a private school and up until now we've been thrilled with the school. Um, but, you know, a few things have happened lately that I'm sort of starting to consider, is this the best option for them? And it, it might turn out that it, it turns out that it is the best option for them, but I need to explore if, you know, I don't feel like I'm doing my job properly if I don't explore all options. Now, like does I this, said, so does this, does this private school have um, facilities to, I guess, and programs for people on the spectrum or? Uh, again, that's, that's such a good question. And I, I get asked this question all the time. It's really interesting is does your child, do your boys have an aide, which they call is an educator assistant, EA. Um, it's either called an EA or an, an aide. Like, is there an aide assigned to your, your child in the classroom? The answer to that is yes, they do have aides. However, um, we are very lucky that at our school, uh, the aides that are assigned to my kids can have that sort of one-on-one -on -one individualized support for my child. Right. But if, if your child is assigned an aide, if they get aid time, as they call it, 
that is not necessarily that does not necessarily mean that that time will be allocated to your child that uh. that time is an educator assistant you'll qualify for an edu so the time is actually for the the, the teacher not the child we were told that really early on is that you know just because eight, you're eight. they get that eight time wrong eight time just because you're allocated eight time doesn't mean that um, your child automatically okay. is has access to that funding. So, so the question was, is, do we have special needs uh, um, well-equipped programs? That, hmm. No. Uh, and no. what prevents them from doing it is just the cost of having to implement it for only a couple of years. Always, come, always comes back to funding, yeah. Yeah. And are there, are there schools that specialise in um, students on the spectrum? Or? Yeah, there are. So they are very few and far between. I don't know what Melbourne's model is, but Perth's model yeah. is they've got, I think there's four or five autism specialist schools. Yeah. But they are so high in demand. Like you just you just need to put so my boys are on a wait list for that, um, mm. but the idea is, and I think this is really cool actually, is the idea is it's not a permanent enrolment. It doesn't just keep rolling over. It is an enrolment with a view to upskill them so they can return back to mainstream. Right, it's almost a, a an understanding and dealing with your. Um, the un understanding with the, the, the cards you've been played and how to manage and cope with those and how that really relates to like real world society. So does it sort of train them to understand specifically um, their disconnects versus how in yeah. the neurotypical world it works? Yeah. Is that, is that what it is? Yeah, it's a bridge. When they're feeling when they're feeling certain emotions and trying to yeah. understand that, okay. How how to how to manage those emotions? Yeah. Um, often with autistic kids, there's there's a gap between how they're feeling and their ability to express that, and that that limited language has a huge impact on their. Like, imagine if you're frustrated, right? <clears throat> but you can't get the words out. <laughs> You can't yeah. go, you know what, sell this happened and rah, 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 rah. you can't sequence that. You can't get mm. that out. So it's just sort of bubbling there, bubbling, bubbling, bubbling. And then you've got the added pressure of sensory processing disorder and you've got noise and you've got people running around and you've got and all this happening and you're frustrated. Now you're in this situation, but you're expected to perform academically. Yeah. Right? Mm. That's hard. That's mm. really hard. And – um, I feel like, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm sure a lot of ASD parents would, would share that kind of moment and on the ASD journey where you just feel like, man, I'm just so alone in this journey. Like, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. No one's telling me what to do and, and no one can, no one can actually. Mm -hmm. Like I've got all awesome therapists for the boys. We've got a like incredible team, but that like, even they said to me, we're going to have a meeting or whatever. And they're like, you know what, Sal, we would love to say do A or B, but we actually can't, you know, ultimately it's your decision. And that's, that's a heavy load to carry. Mm. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm like, you know, do I do I homeschool? Do I do it for like a time and then, you know, with a view to get them back into mainstream or is mainstream just not going to work? I've got a few people. There is, I, I know four. I know four people that have homeschooled. I think homeschooling is a lot more common here in WA than it is back home in Melbourne. Um, and they have all just said the change in the child's just incredible. Are they, are they, have they all been kids on the spectrum or? No, no. Ah, okay. No, all different types yeah. of, yeah. Yeah, I, I was actually doing some um, uh, research and, and the main reasons why people choose to home oh, educate. 
Yeah, come on. Uh, is religion. Yeah. Uh, philosophical, so which can be religious and educational philosophy as well. Bullying. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, number four, dissatisfaction with the school. <laughs> <laughs> Special needs and travel. Yeah, right. travel's a big travel. one. Yeah. Travel's all bases. Yeah. Um, so they're all pretty good reasons to um, to choose to home educate. And it's kind of uh, – one of the things that I think about is on the sort of philo- philosophical slash religious side of things. Um, I'm not really comfortable with schools having any say in basically the way that someone should should think. Um, I'd prefer them stick to just the facts. You know, this is this is English. This is the basics of it. This is maths. This is that, I mean, they don't even teach stuff like how to run your finances at home yep. or, you know, how to pay a yep. bill, what is tax, yep. all these things yep. that yep. seem that life every skills. person should – yeah, life skills that they should yep. learn before they head off into the, the scary big world. Yeah. Oh, I've got $100. I don't know what I'm going to do. Mm. Yeah, it's, look, I, I think you and I are quite similar – and I've got a few other friends too who we are open to looking at other avenues and going, all right, just because the majority – not because we want to be nonconformists. That's that's not it. But if the major, the way of doing – the majority – the what. The accepted cultural way of doing something, if that's not working, I think you and I will both go, well, hang on. Actually, is there I've got a word option? for it. The cultural typical way. <laughs> cultural typical. <laughs> it's a Jason. Um, <laughs> so, if it's work, that's what I said earlier. If it's working, great. Leave it. Don't. If it's not broke, don't fix it. You know, go for it. But you know, like people give me this ridiculous feedback, like, "Oh, well." What about, you know, when they get into the real world? Or what about if, you know, it's like, how do you know my kid's not going to be some, like, crazy entrepreneur and work for himself? Or mm. the other thing, the other really interesting, always with homeschool, this one comes up. It's so interesting. They say the socialization. Oh, they're not going to get socialized, right? And it's like, man, just because you're putting your kid in the same room as 30 other kids their same age doesn't mean they're socializing, <laughs> man. There's like a pack of animals just go and work yeah. it out. Yeah. Like if you if you are socially inclined, yes, you're going to socialize. But if you don't have that, if that part of your brain isn't working the way it's supposed to working, it's supposed to be working, you can be in a room full of, mm. you know, your peers and still be as antisocial as you were at that. a park. You know, and the other thing is, Jay, not everyone wants to have a thousand mates. Mm. Sam certainly doesn't. Yeah. He's got, I mean, the kid's got a lot of mates. He's very popular, but you know, he's happy to just fly solo if do his own thing. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, socialization what when people go, "Oh, you know, the, but their socialization." You go, "Well, what's your idea? What does socialization what are you referring to, really?" That's a pretty broad term Mm. are are you talking about how to interact with each other how to be polite to each other how to have consideration for each other how you know i feel like i could i could show i could model those things to my kids better at home Mm. yeah i what was this great quote that i had down here uh it's actually a religious one uh deuteronomy Deuteronomy. chapter six Chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. Look at Jay. Jay's busted out the scripture. Nice. (laughs) It says, these commandments that I give you today are are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. I was like, huh. There you go. Bible is awesome, man. You should read it. You know, some people say. I've read it twice. (laughs) From cover to cover, no, you have not. 
Ask my mum. <laughs> you have not read the Bible twice. I have. Cover to cover? Yes. Awesome. That's one of the weird things I do. Love, I love the Bible, man. It's my favourite like book of all time. Red, this red Bible that I've read. Have you? Yeah. Have you? <laughs> read it more. Full of good stories. Oh, mate. <laughs> Bible stories are epic. To be honest with you, if I'm being 100% off, honest, I have read it plenty of times, or twice, not plenty of times, <laughs> but, I, but I don't really remember anything from it. <laughs> like I, I got remember the Ark, right? Everyone remembers the Ark. Everyone remembers the Garden of Eden. Oh, well, they're the, you know, the, the, that, big, the big... They're well storied. I love you know. it, man. So homeschooling, we kind of got off the beaten track there, but I think yeah, it's. Well, I'm, look, the way I look at it, they've got know. like what really you, cool. What do, you, pro- I want, what do you reckon? I think it's definitely a valid option. Like I would honestly um, consider. I was actually saying to Annie just today. I think um, how after looking into it, I'm like, oh, this would be a really cool thing if you could financially make it happen. I don't think there's any better person to raise your child than I think yourself. So. I like. Agree. Um, it, it seems weird, like, and I don't want to be judgy, but like, no, 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 I, no, and that's what we keep saying. If it works, leave it. Don't, yeah, yeah, don't totally. just, don't just homeschool because you know you think that's the cool, trendy thing to do. No, that we're not saying that. Mm. We're not saying that at all. We're just saying that if you are looking for, if if something's not working, if your child is being bullied, if your child. Yeah. Ha- does have an additional need don't push it up a hill yeah like don't don't swim against the current and Mm. and and educate yourself when i say educate i don't mean academically but explore your options and empower yourself to go because i think here's the thing this i think a massive reason why a lot of and i i will take myself for example right the reason I haven't signed on the dotted line and just gone, yep, do it now, is because it's not the norm, so you're scared. There's a fear there. You're like, okay, what if it doesn't work? Where am I going to do What if I, I can't educate? When am I going to have a break? What are people going to think? Like all of these things. I mean, you can overcome these things, yes, but I'm saying I think if if more people transcended all those fears and anxieties, yeah. I wonder if pe- more people would actually homeschool. I would totally consider like the way that I think about it is if there was a manage if there was a manageable place where me and Annie could live somewhere, work three days a week yeah. each, yeah, and then toss up the the two things, and I think Annie would be, bring a great direction from a creative and artistic oh. standpoint, and then Absolutely. you know I could do all the 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 business maths. and the maths. She'd probably do English as well because my English is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do all the, but you all know, the but here's stuff. the other thing. Yeah. Here's the other thing, right? This is what people don't know. There are tutors. Like ah. there are tutors assigned. So it's not like you get, and it depends who you go with, all right? Because there are a whole, di- there are a lot of different entities, but you know, for a lot of them, you're going to get your curriculum. And, yes, you work through the curriculum. And if you struggle, there are tutors that you can bring in. Or mm. in some other some other models, what they do is they ha- – yes, it's homeschool, but they might have, okay, every Tuesday on 9, nine o'clock, like you could, like, rotate. So I might take geography, you take history. So you're kind of rotating the class of, like, four or five. Yeah. That's yeah, dope. No, okay, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like going to uni, kind of. Dope, man. Like, to be able to go, all right, you know, like if I was home, oh, well, you know, Tuesday I'm going to Uncle Jay's and he's going to teach me about, I don't know, profit and loss. And then on <laughs> Wednesday, Lucy comes to mind and I teach her about, I don't know, drama or something or whatever, right? But I'm, I'm like, man, I reckon that's cool as. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Nothing at all. I think it's awesome. No? And you know what? I saw something. I saw a article that said Harvard actually um, 
uh, what's the word, reveres those that have been homeschooled. Yeah, there, I did see a list of schools actually where it was like, and I was like, oh, that's really interesting. Harvard, one of them. Uh, so we obviously understand it's possible and it's a viable option now. Like there's plenty of even technology uh, technology platforms that assist you through the whole process That's as well. Right. And they can actually even get schooled, I believe, directly online. Like where, it's you know, so, kind of. So much of it would be online. So yeah, much. Of it. So, so it, I think um, depending on you know, your, your circumstances and what works for you, it's well and truly an option if that's something you want to do. I don't think anyone should shy away from wanting to try a different methodology of teaching if that would work for them. Just like yeah. if, if if what you think is right is for them to go to normal school, so be it as well. Who cares? Absolutely. You just go and figure out which one. I'm someone, okay, I'm someone who would have never been homeschooled. I'm like, what? Not see my mates every day? I don't think so. No, I went to school to see my mates. Like, that was me. I am a typical mainstream chick. That yeah. worked for me, right? Doesn't work for everyone. Um, I've always wondered something as well. <laughs> I was just thinking about last night. I'm like, why is it, it only get to those last couple of years before they do tests so you can pass, like a year level? I don't Oh, I don't understand. Why is it like you? Oh, you've just finished year seven. Sweet. Next one, year eight. Oh, sweet. Next one. I, yeah, I don't feel like you actually. There's like no tests at, at each stage. Maybe that's why they're letting people who are just too dumb to get through. It's happening uh, more and more. Right, you know, like I, I don't know. Well, if, if probably... Back in our day, can you remember there were kids that stayed down? <laughs> yeah. All that doesn't time. happen anymore. That doesn't happen. Really? What was this? Well, this probably segues into our next question, which is, uh, and we've probably already spoken a lot about it already in part of, in the homeschooling discussion, but is the current education system broken in Australia? Um, and I just want to actually go to this one statistic that I saw, uh, and it was Australia has been ranked... 39 out of 41 high and middle income countries in achieving quality education. 39 out of 41. No, no. Too legit, too legit to quit. No, it is not 39. Yeah, it is. Who's number one? China. Let me me click. China. I don't know if they're high and middle income, to be honest with you. Number one's Norway. Yeah. Oh, okay. Norway, Germany, Norway. Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Iceland, Switzerland. Oh, the first Asian one yes. is Korea, Republic Dude, Slovenia. You know that Norway model? The, the, like the, um, the Norway, Denmark. Do you know about their, their model? Yeah, they like do five hours a day or something. Is that that right. one? Oh, yeah. Something, like, something ridiculous like that. No homework. These kids. Yeah, no homework. No, there's absolutely no homework. They do like five hours a day. They speak like 18 languages or something ridiculous. And their marks Cause that are five, on Because that five hours is like learning and doing. Yeah, mate. It's not just someone waffling and shit. It's just like someone goes, this is what we learned today. Waffling? <laughs> That's what most teachers did in my time. It's like, <laughs> what are you talking? Why are you talking to me? Teach me well, something. I think, well, I think I think that's where, and this is why I think you've got ADHD, because that's very much like what Nate's like. Nate's like this constantly. He's like, "Mum, she's an idiot." I'm like, "Don't call your teacher an idiot." I'm like, "Don't call her an idiot." It's like, man, she's dumb. She keeps telling me stuff I know. I already know it. And I'm like, babe, you can't just say you know it and not put it on the paper. He goes, "Nah, it's stupid." <laughs> He What's goes, the every answer? Month of my class is I already stupid. know it. I already know. I know it. And the, the 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 fact of the matter is, he does because he's a he's a highly intelligent kid. But what I'm saying back to circle back what I was saying before, because he can't regulate himself, he can't demonstrate that. <laughs> like ta- he can't yeah. tangibly, he can't tangibly demonstrate that. But he's yeah. like, no, nah, they're they're a pack of idiots. <laughs> All of them. This stupid bum. What a boss. 
So he's he's back to the the he's here's another thing which is kind of kind of like bugging me. Teachers resigning at an alarming rate. Did you know that fifty percent of that. teachers in Australia leave their profession within the first five years of employment? I'm like, damn, that's that's you know massive. what? You know what I think though. And this is, I had no evidence to support this. This is just a theory, right? This is just a Sally theory. But gone are the days now, like back in the day, if you were a teacher, you had some level of authority. Mm. That's gone. So now, like everything's about, you know, class, you know, you know, Nathan, even our friend Nathan Russo told me, told me about this when he became a teacher is, you know, it's not just you stand there and you, you deliver the lesson. Like you've got to, you have to um, know about class management. You have to know how to liaise with parents. Parents are just a night, like they can be so funny. Like so teachers told me before, every parent thinks that their child's a genius. And it's like, nah, they're not. They're really normal, actually. It's like, no, my child's like really advanced. It's like, no. Nah. Your kid's normal. And that's okay. Like, that's it's cool. Like, don't be, you know, so it's not no, you, gone in the days where a, a, a teacher is just, comes in, the, the children are expected to behave, deliver the lesson. Yeah, no. It, it's, it's, it's become this whole other thing. And I think the burnout rate is high. I think the yeah, turnover. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. His parents yeah. just talk too much. Some do. So, so obviously there are people who are still obviously achieving really good things in the yeah. current schooling oh. system. But I think the the weak are being left behind and through some weird sense of virtuosity in letting failing kids continue through schooling even though they need more, it's just this vicious loop of letting more dumb people through the system until they get to there. Like, what am I going to do? And they're, what do they do? Like, you know, the lights. It's troubling. Mm. Troubling. I find it troubling. Should I have said unnormal rather than dumb? I don't think dumb's the most politically correct term you could choose. <laughs> I wouldn't say dumb. They're not dumb. They're yeah, dumb, sorry. That's... It, it's just... Well, we... <laughs> you know what's dumb? I'll tell you what's dumb. Making a child do... Stuff okay. they don't want to do. Yeah. So, there's this awesome author that I follow. Her name's Maggie Dent. She's got four boys, right? And she's just such an advocate for boys. She's amazing. And Finally. she talks, I've, I've seen, I've been to a lecture, not a lecture, a conference of hers and she was so dynamic. And like she was saying all these things about boys that like she's fighting really hard with the Department of Education to, to make these things more known. But she said things like things as simple as, so I've got my boys don't stop moving. They move and they move and they move. And, they move. and that's not just, that's just not autistic kids. I think that's just boys, right? And she said that anatomically boys can't, you know, like on the mats, like sit, sit everyone with your legs crossed. She's like anatomically they can't. And yeah, that's why girls yeah. girls sit so because like they they have the the body structure or the ligaments or whatever stretch in the way that you know looks compliant and the boys look like they're being naughty when actually if they cross their legs it actually hurts them and so they mm. wriggle around and then they get in trouble you know so it's this vicious cycle of like putting them in situations where they're going to fail and then be rating them for it. Mm. So you go. Well, I have this theory that even I think these structured things that people do probably don't make sense for a lot of people as well. So I don't, 
really get the whole, you know, almost army routine stuff. I don't know if they still do that kind of stuff anymore. But um, the thing that really scares me about uh, allowing other people to, and I think I may have touched on it at one stage in one of our other podcasts, but one thing that I'm really concerned with is people's political ideas. Like right. I said to you earlier, was that, you know, I just want, just just teach the kids stuff that you don't need to teach them um, political ideas. I don't think that's, unless it's 100% like a, this is what some people think and this is what other people think. What do you think? That's different right. than someone going, yep. bah, 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 bah. That's it. Yeah. I don't think that's, that's right. That's what you have to think, right. Yeah, because I, I actually have, um, I, I think about it. So I've got, obviously, Lucy's a, what is she now? She's turning four soon. So Aww. in a year's time, she'll be going to school. Yeah. And I don't necessarily find uh, there is a somewhat attitude of, um, and I, I hopefully people take this the right way, but as a narrative of women as victims. So like, as in, you know, um, that they'll get paid less than men, that they'll, yeah. uh, you know, that they'll get raped and that yeah. there's all these like horrible things out there. And I'm like, you know, that's the reality is, is I want her to not think she has a, um, she's starting from a peg back. I just wanted to think that she's equal yeah. to people straight up. Like, yeah. I don't think preaching yeah. the the narrative of, of it's hard, isn't it? it? Yeah, like I, I just think it, she should just be like without any sort of other idea in her head that she she's not good enough to do this or she's not good enough. Yeah. I want it just to be like none, I'm, not either good or bad. Just it's just neutral. Clean slate. Just yeah. neutral. Yeah. 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 Learn Absolutely. as you go. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm not better. I'm not worse. I just am. I'm Lucy. That's it. End of. Yeah. 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 I totally get that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and I'm, and I'm not saying that these kinds of things are rampant, but like, there's definitely risks of anything, even current political ideas that are quite controversial. Um, I believe and, could, and loud and loud, yeah, and loud that could 100% be something that it's not something you want your kids to be taught about. It's. But I think I think the key individually, up, yeah. Right? I think. Honestly, the key is, and I think this is where you'll be successful, where both you and Annie will be successful, is if you, and I, we've got this relationship with our kids definitely, and it's not hard to uphold. If you've got that relationship where you're like, you know what? They're like, oh, you know, this someone said this to me at school and da, 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 and you go, okay, well, what do you think about that? Yeah. You know, like where yeah. we are all about discussion. Sometimes they can... You know, sometimes they can contribute. They're still little, so sometimes they can't. But we have developed a culture of you have a space here to talk about what you – like, does that sound – does that ring true to you? Or do you think there might be another way to look at that? Yeah, it's you basically – so as, yeah. as long as you're back home – because you and Annie will always be the most influential, no matter yeah. what. You'll always be the most influential. So if you, yeah. if you keep that up, yeah, she'll be all right. It's basically the, the opposite of the way I was raised, even though I have no issue with the way I was raised. Um, it wasn't a very open dialogue kind of parenting. Oh, it I was like, this is the way it is. And uh, That's yeah, these are, these are bad things. Here's a list of bad things. <laughs> these are things you can't do. Yeah. And that small list over there, you can do that. There wasn't there wasn't room to dis for discussion. Uh, yeah, I'm almost envious of of Matt's um, upbringing. That's yeah. my husband. Um, he grew up in a very conversational atmosphere. Mm. You know, and and you know, it's interesting to see the kind of people that that my husband and his sister Belinda have have grown to be. They are really chill. Like yeah. non non combative, you know, whatever. And I think maybe but, some of that's got to do is because they had they had a space to air their how they thought. They so they also could have come from good uh, gene temperament background as well. My my in laws are crazy awesome. Like 
I can't believe my in-laws are so awesome. It's just, like, unheard of. But, mm. yes, they are good stock for sure. Um, I think I'm going to have to wrap it up pretty uh, soon. It is just after 10 p.m. here. Um, is there anything else we really need to add? I think we've, we've given a good dose of the homeschooling oh, versus I what think, the current school. I think, like, like I'm not... anything. I think like with anything that we talk about, Jay, it's always, you know, we are open and unless it's horse racing, um, we are very mm-hmm. open-minded people and it's about educating yourself well. Yeah. It, you know, if, if you are thinking about something, another option, educate yourself. There's no better mm. time than now mm. to find out your information, empower yourself with information and make a choice that is right for your child. You are allowed to do that. You're going to have, take it from me because I have had some strong voices around. I haven't told many people about this, but the people, some people that I've told, some people are like, yes, absolutely do it. Other people are like, no, oh, but what about this? And, you know, they try and derail you. And I just think if you, if your parent intuition, not just mother intuition, dad intuition as well, if your parent intuition is telling, you know what? I don't know. I know my kid better than you know my kid, and I feel like this is going to work. Man, do it. Educate yourself and go for gold. Yeah. You just don't know. You could be raising the next. You know, Albert Einstein was homeschooled. There was a, a list of all these awesome people that were homeschooled. Einstein was one of them. There was another. Oh, really? Yeah. Was it Steve Jobs or Bill Gates? Maybe it was Bill Gates. Was homeschool. There was this list. I should have got the list for you, but there was a list of really awesome people that um, were homeschooled. And Abe Lincoln was really. Hmm? There was a heap. Mm. Yeah, really. Yeah, I, 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 like I said, it would definitely be something I would look into. To it was uh, interesting also to, to see that list of people were really mm. big thinkers. Hmm. Because I had yeah. the space and the room and the permission oh. to think outside the square. She's only if I got to think from when I was ten years old, I would have been. You would have been boss of the world. <laughs> well, as you saying the other day, I'm like, you know what I think? What I thought about the other, day, I'm like, I think I might try politics one day. Politics? What? Like Basically. actually. Like actually get into politics. What are you going to politic? Uh, just. Mauritian rights. Yeah. <laughs> Mauritian <laughs> rights. No, just um, I just I, I'm 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 I have quite strong feelings about certain things, and I actually don't think they're being addressed as they should be for the normal mm-hmm. people. For <laughs> the normal people. Do you reckon of you could? Australia. Do you reckon you would stick it out? Yeah, hundred percent. Like I think, um, do it, man. Do it. I think there's every every requirement for a voice like mine. Yeah, do it. I'd vote for you. Yeah, vote number one. Hey, if you've made it this far through the actual podcast, there's one thing I've never done to this to this point in time is, if you like our podcast, why don't you subscribe? Subscribe. Mm, I think it's leave a, good a idea. comment below. Leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. You got do any you suggestions? Homeschool? Do you homeschool? Yeah, do. What, what, yeah. Have yeah, you homeschooled? True. Are you thinking about homeschooling? Let us We'd know your thoughts. Love to know your thoughts. Yes. Mm. And we are. We are. You know what? We are pro you that's what we are we are pro you we are pro what works for you that's what we are pro you do you you do you boo (laughs) (laughs) you do you boo that was a bit aggressive actually (laughs) are you mocking my nigerian or no (laughs) no i was mocking your leprechaun man (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm still buzzing over that, to be honest with you. I was like, uh, so good. I went and told the yarn. Uh, there's a couple of Malaysian guys at work who are somewhat Chinese. I think they're Chinese Malaysian. Dude, are you, trying to, 
Are you trying to buddy up to your people? <laughs> I, said, I said, boys. Boys. Ten percent Chinese over here. Boys. Ten percent China. We're in the same team. Yeah. <laughs> High fives. <laughs> I love it. Technically, I could open a dumpling shop and not be, you know, overtly culturally appropriating other people's food. Mate, when is, we need to do, little... actually, can we do that? Can we do that conversation? Cultural Talk. appropriation. Do you know what that is? Yes, I do. Yeah, I think it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you feel the same way. Even if you did, I'd be like, why? Yeah. Uh, why? That's another. We'll, we'll, we'll do that next. Cultural appropriation. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah like, let's do it. Can a white person dress in a Chinese person's dress? Of course they can. <laughs> <laughs> but that's happening on the next episode. Because you do you. You do you. We're pro it's you. Only... Pro you. Bella, it's been lovely talking to you. Always lovely talking to you, mate. Have a great one. See you, mate. Bye. Bye.